Shalom. Welcome to the Shepherd's Light Online Church. Before the service starts, we wanted to invite you to join our chat. The chat is where you can ask questions, share verses, and connect with other viewers from around the world. Just write your first comment and choose the nickname to join. If you need prayer, click the live prayer icon and you'll be taken to a private chat where one of our team members will pray with you. The service is about to start. Don't forget to sign up so you can keep your username and profile. God bless you and enjoy the message. became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness he humbled himself and carried the cross love so amazing love so Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven. Jesus Messiah, you're the Lord of all. His body the bread, his blood the wine, broken and poured out all for love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. So amazing, love so amazing, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed
Shalom Nashimitakot. Hello, sweet women. I am so thankful that we're here together again. And for those of you in Israel, just know that we are so fervently praying for you. And we know that the Lord's going to walk you through this time. And just, you know, He keeps reminding us in this crazy world that we've got right now and in the scary things that are happening just to keep our eyes on him and we're praying for wisdom for is israel's government for protection for the people and that through this bad time many will come to know the lord right and aren't you so so thankful that we can turn to the Lord in times like this. I don't know what people do without him, right? So, also, last week I forgot to mention our new coffee shop setting and that we'll be studying in. And so I'm just pretending that we're all sitting around the tables, um, just fellowshipping together and studying God's word together. So thankful we can do that especially at times like this. And I really like the idea that for each book that we study, we'll be in a different coffee shop. And so it'll just give us memories of where we are as we study certain books. So, now last week we started the book of Habakkuk. And remember, he asked the Lord three questions. And now we're going to learn what the Lord answered him what he said. So grab something to drink, get cozy in your chair, get your Bible as we study his word. And let's see what the Lord has for us this day. Now, Habakkuk was questioning God on why he wasn't punishing those who were purposely in sin, who were having nothing to do with him, right? And Let's go over Habakkuk's three questions to the Lord, and then we're going to read God's answer to him. So, remember he said, How long, O Lord, must I call for help? But you don't listen. Violence is everywhere. I cry, but you don't come to save. Now, we know that part's not true, but that's how he was feeling, right? And he was able to be honest with the Lord. Now, his second question was, Must I forever see these evil deeds? Why, Lama, why must I watch all this miser misery? Whenever I look, I see destruction. I see violence. I'm surrounded by people who love to argue and fight. And then remember his third question was, the law has become paralyzed, and there's no justice in the courts. The wicked's far outnumber the righteous, so that justice has become perverted. You know, like we talked about last week, each of us could ask the Lord the exact same thing, right? Today. But praise God, we do know He always hears, and He does answer right? So, let's talk about what the Lord told Habakkuk in response to his three questions. So, turn to Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5, and it says, The Lord replied, Look around at the nations. Look and be amazed, for I am doing something in your own day, something you wouldn't believe even if someone told you about it. So, if you had been asking, you know, questioning the Lord, why aren't you pouring out your judgment on these people? And then the Lord said, He is doing something. And it's something that you're not going to even believe is going to happen. Wouldn't you be excited to hear what the Lord was planning? And I'm sure that Habakkuk was the same way. You know, you you want to know, oh, wow, he's answering me. What is he going to do? How is he going to judge these people? 
And wouldn't you love to know what was going through Habakkuk's mind as the Lord was answering him? So he starts out, the Lord starts out that way, right? And now let's read, um, look at chapter 1, verse 6 through 10, and we'll see what the Lord's planning. He's saying, I am raising up the Babylonians, a cruel and violent people that will march across the world, conquer other lands, and they're notorious for their cruelty. And they do whatever they like. Their horses are swifter than cheetahs and fiercer than wolves at dusk. Their charioteers charge from far away. And like eagles, they swoop down to devour their prey. Oh, they come all bent on violence. Their hordes advance like the desert wind, sweeping captives ahead of them, just like sand. They scoff at kings and princes and scorn all their fortresses. They simply pile ramps of earth against their walls and capture them. And they sweep past like the wind, and then they're gone. But of all, they are deeply guilty, for their own strength is their God. Wow. I mean, that's heavy what we read, right? And, you know, it would be like asking the Lord these questions that Habakkuk had. You know, and like I said, we could easily ask that. Lord, what's going on? There's violence everywhere. People aren't following you. They're not, you know, worshiping you. And then the Lord replies and said, don't worry, I've got it all worked out. My plan is for ISIS to come and invade your country. You'd be like, wait, what? What, Lord? Lama? Right? Ma? Ma? What? Did I hear you correctly? I mean, I'm sure Habakkuk did not expect the Lord to use this extreme measure. The Babylonians were known for their violence. People greatly feared them. In the same way that when Isis was at its worst, the people around him that they were invading, they were dreading it, right? And I'm sure Habakkuk feared them. And I'm sure he was terrified at the thought of them attacking the Jewish people, right? And not just the Jewish people, because God says he's going to allow them to attack all these countries, including Israel. And did Habakkuk suddenly think, oh, wait, maybe I shouldn't have prayed that, you know? Instead of being frustrated at God for not pouring out his judgment, maybe I should have been praying for the people. And, you know, you wonder, did what go through his mind, did he think about how Abraham prayed and interceded for the wicked city of Sodom, for Sodom and Gomorrah? You know, we can read about that in Genesis chapter 18. Or maybe Habakkuk thought about Moshe, Moses, and how he pleaded for the forgiveness of the people. And you can read about that in Numbers 14. You know, and in Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, God tells us, devote yourself to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. You know, and, and this is such a good reminder. We need to be faithfully praying for others. And not just people that we like. Remember what Yeshua told us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 through 45. He said, But I say, so the Lord's talking, right? But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children 
of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. And isn't that, especially for right now, that's a heavy verse. You know, are we praying for Hamas, for the people to give their life to the Lord? Because I can't remember his name, but the leader, son of Hamas, remember, he was in jail and everything, prison, for trying to kill the Jewish people. And several years ago, he gave his life to the Lord. And Yeshua completely changed him and gave him that love for the Jewish people. And, you know, God can change hearts. And if you know him, you know he's changed you and me. And so, you know, don't these verses so apply to what Habakkuk was praying and questioning God about? Remember, because he was upset because God hadn't punished the Israelites who wanted nothing to do with God yet. And so now God's answering, but as you can tell, it's not what Habakkuk expected. It's not what he wanted. And can't you totally relate to that? Okay, let's look at Habakkuk 1, verse 12. And so now, so first Habakkuk asked those three questions. Then we just read what God answered, which wasn't what Habakkuk wanted. And now Habakkuk starts talking to God and he prays, O oh Lord, my God, my Holy One, you who are eternal, surely you're not planning to wipe us out. O oh Lord, our rock, you sent these Babylonians to correct us, to punish us for our many sins. You know, so in these few verses, we see that Habakkuk's first thought was, whether or not the Lord was going to completely wipe them out because of their sin. You know, he's probably thinking, oh my, what did I do? What did I pray for? Right? And, you know, I'm sure Habakkuk thought, okay, if the Lord wipes us out, we deserve it. Right? I mean, Habakkuk was frustrated. But at the same time, he didn't want that to happen. You know, he did realize, okay, Lord, you're doing it because of our sin. You're doing it as a punishment. But was Habakkuk thinking about what the Lord had shown Amos, Amos in English, concerning the fact that the Lord was going to shake the Israelites because of their sin? But thankfully, in Amos chapter 9, the Lord said he would never completely destroy them, right? Did he think about that? You know, when he was questioning, but God, are you going to wipe us out? Did he think, but in almost nine, you said you never would completely wipe out the Jewish people from Israel, right? And then Habakkuk continues, turn to chapter one and look at 13 through 17. And he's still talking to the Lord. And he's saying, but you are pure, and you cannot stand the sight of evil. Will you wink at their treachery? And he's talking about the Babylonians, right? Should you be silent while the wicked swallow up people more righteous than they are? You know, because at least even if they weren't following God like they should, at least they knew him, right? And then he goes on, he says, Are we only fish to be caught and killed? Are we only sea creatures that have no leader? Must we be strung up on their hooks, caught in their nets? While they rejoice and they celebrate. And then they're going to worship their nets. And they're going to burn incense in front of them. These nets are the gods who have made us rich they will claim. Will you let them get away with this forever? Will they succeed forever in their heartless 
conquests. You know, and right now, can't many people in Israel be saying that about the attack in October, last October, the horrendous things that were done to the people? You know, fearing now with Iran and Lebanon, Syria, surrounded. But God is mighty, right? We just need to turn to Him. You know, and as we read what we just read, you can hear the confusion in Habakkuk's words, right? He knew that the Israelites had been sinning against God, but he was confused why a holy God would use the Babylonians to punish them when they were far, far worse than the Israelites ever had been, right? And I love this part. In the first part of verse 13 that we just read, Habakkuk talks about the holiness of God. He knew that God was a holy God. He was pure, right? And one that God can't look upon evil. And that can't help but make you think about what Yeshua did on the cross for you and for me and the heartache that he must have gone through. Because remember, Romans 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but of all, the free gift of God is eternal life through Yeshua, Jesus our Lord, right? Eternal life, living forever with God. So if it wasn't for what Yeshua did on the cross for us, this means we would eternally be separated from God, right? God can't look upon this sin. I remember in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, if you want to look at it, it says he personally, Yeshua, personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and we can live for what is right. By his wounds you are healed. Wow. Isn't that incredible? And 1 Peter chapter 1, just go to chapter 1, verse 18 through 20. It says, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Yeshua. Jesus Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose Him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, He has been revealed for your sake, for your sake, for my sake. Praise God for that. But you know what? It made me stop and think. You know, I always have thought about the sacrifice he made in so much pain physically, right? But I never thought about mentally what Yeshua went through for you and me. You know, we know from what we just read in Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 13, it says that God can't tolerate evil, right? He can't. His eyes are too pure to even look at evil. So that means all the more when you think of how Yeshua took our sins, yours and mine, upon himself on that cross. They were nailed on the cross with him. His blood was shed for you and me, right? But we also read in the Bible that Yeshua's heavenly Father couldn't even look at him at that time. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 45 through 46, it says, At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until around three o'clock. 
And at about three o'clock, Yeshua cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama, sabatakani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Can you imagine how Yeshua felt? Knowing that because he loved us enough to take our sin upon himself, that he was separated from the love of his Father for a time. I mean, he knew that God had to abandon him, that God could not look at him. And yet, because he loved us, he was willing to do that. He was willing to die in my place, in your place, to take our sins upon the cross, to shed his blood for us, and for his heavenly Father, Almighty God, to turn his back, his face, not being able to look upon his precious son at that moment. You know? He did that for us. And it also makes me think about how if we don't give our lives to Him, how we're separated from God forever. You know, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11 through 14, it says, Under the old covenant, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day and night, offering the same sacrifices again and again, which they can't take away our sins, right? Because we just keep sinning. And then verse 12 says, But of all, our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all times. And then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. And there he waits until his enemies are humbled and made a footstool under his feet. And then at some point he's coming back for us, right? The Lord was willing to do all of this, not just suffer physically, but suffer the separation from God all because he loved you and me that much. And God loved us that much to allow his precious only begotten son to do that for us. And think about it. Oh, sweet sister, if you were the only person in the world in that ever lived, that ever will live, and you were the only one who would ever thank Yeshua for what he did and give your life to him and say you want to live your life for him. Do you realize if you're the only one out of all those people, he would be willing to have gone through that just for you because he loves you that much. And you know, maybe you've never given your life to the Lord. Maybe you don't know him as your Lord, as your Savior. And remember we read Romans chapter 6, verse 23. It says, For the wages of sin is death, but of all the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Yeshua our Lord. And I know we've talked about this before. It's a gift, but like any gift, it's not yours until you take it, right? You know, if you were giving me a gift and I'm like, nope, I'm not going to take it, maybe just before I die, or, you know, I don't know, I'm a basically good person, so uh, maybe I'll just slide in. No. It says Yeshua is the only rock, only way to God to get our sins forgiven, to have eternal life with Him. The only way, right? So if you have never given your life to the Lord, oh, sweet friend, do it now. 
I promise you, you'll never be sorry. And you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that when you die, you're going to live forever with our Heavenly Father. Forever. And it's going to be wonderful. Read Revelations chapter 22, 21 and 22. It tells what heaven is going to be like. And if you've done that, we would so love to hear about it so that we can rejoice with you, so that we can pray with you. And if you need a Bible in any language, let us know because we can get it for you. So, in the meantime, let's go back and see what Habakkuk was saying to the Lord. Okay? Remember, he was asking the Lord how... Can you allow such a ruthless, heartless, scary, horrible group like the Babylonians to come against Israel? And he was reminding the Lord that the Babylonians were far more sinful than the Israelis ever were, right? And so you can see in this, in a sense, Habakkuk was raiding sin, right? He was saying, hey, the sin that the Babylonians do it's way up here. The sins that we Jewish people do, it's more up here. And, you know, humanly speaking, isn't that so easy to do? Think about what ISIS was doing. Or think about what Hamas was doing in October. I mean, they were butchers, right? And that Babylonians had that same type of reputation. And yet the Lord was saying, hey, I'm going to have them invade Israel. And we'll learn later, and if you know history, you know God did allow it. But he did it because he wanted to purify and bring the Jewish people back to him. Because at that time they were worshiping idols and they were throwing their babies into the fire for the idols and stuff, right? And he couldn't tolerate that. So Habakkuk still didn't understand at this point that sin is sin in God's eyes. That in God's eyes, gossiping is as bad as murder, right? So we see from last week and this week, first Habakkuk was so upset that God wasn't judging the Israelites for their sin, right? And then when God told him, how he was going to judge them, and what was going to happen. Habakkuk was upset at God again, but this time because he was going to use the Babylonians, who were far more sinful than the Jewish people. And so this poor guy, he was so confused. And you can't blame him, right? Okay, let's um, just briefly turn to Habakkuk chapter 1. Uh, I'm sorry. Chapter 2, let's go to the next chapter, verse 1. And let's see what he did. Habakkuk says, and he's telling God this, I will climb up to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. And there I will wait, wait, to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint. Don't you love that, sweet sisters? Don't you love that example that Habakkuk is for us? I mean, think about it. How many times do we ask God something, okay? But then we don't bother to wait for an answer. We're like, oh, he's not answering, right? And I started thinking, I mean, God really convicted me in this. How many times... Do I sit and read my Bible, and then I pray? Maybe I thank the Lord for what He's done, for all His blessings. And then I pray for other people, right? Because there's so many needs, and so many people are hurting right now. So then pray for other people. And then I lay my request before the Lord. My anxieties, my fears, my what ifs, my all those questions. Lord, how is this going to work out? And then what do I do? 
so many times I do that, and then I say, Amen. And I get up, and I go about my business. And in the meantime, God's saying, Hey, wait! Don't you want to hear what I have to say? Don't you want to hear my answer that you're seeking? You're asking me, but then you're, zoop, you're gone, right? You're doing the things that need to be done. But you're not doing the greatest thing, which is to wait, to be still before me. How many times has, have we missed out on things? Have I missed out? Because I don't bother to wait on the Lord. And don't you love what Habakkuk did? And it's such a great reminder. I mean, he was having a really difficult time understanding what the Lord was planning on doing. And if the Lord had told us this, we would have the same questions, right? I mean, Habakkuk understood, okay, it's because of our, you know, God's punishing us because of our sins. I was upset at God because he wasn't pouring out his judgment. But this seems so harsh. And he knew that God was a good God, a loving God. And he knew that God had told other prophets that he would never wipe out the Jewish people, that they were his chosen people, right? And yet now it looked like that's what he was planning on doing. And he was confused. And I'm sure he was so scared about the future, right? Both for himself, his family, the other people. I'm so, you know, sure that he was worried, anxious, right? But overall, when those thoughts came, when Satan made sure those thoughts came, he knew that the Lord was good. He knew that the Lord was loving. And he also knew that the Lord heard his prayer and would answer. He had that confidence now that God was going to answer. Because remember, his first question, he goes, he didn't think God had heard, right? So now he's grown enough to know that God heard. And he's willing to wait until the Lord answers him. And I love that. And he was going to go somewhere to be quiet, to listen for the answer. He was willing to wait and let the Lord speak to him in the quietness of his heart. And when we're in a situation we don't understand, isn't this exactly what you and I need to do? When fear, anxiety, the what if this happens comes into our mind. Because remember, Satan's going to make sure it does because Satan wants to cripple us. He wants to make it where we're so bound up in fear and anxiety and anger that we're not talking to the Lord, we're not listening, and we're not being used by Him. So our job then is to do what God tells us to do. In 2 Corinthians 10.5, Remember, we studied it when we were um, studying the book of 2 Corinthians. It says, casting down arguments of every high thing that it exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every, every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And isn't that the key, sweet women? We can't help with the thoughts, the questions that come in our mind, right? We can't help that. But of all, what we can do and what we can help is what are we going to do with these thoughts, these feelings that come in our mind, right? The ones that Satan whispers to us. Because we know they're not from God because God says, don't be anxious. Don't be angry. Don't be fearful. Just think about today 
because tomorrow has enough worries. And he realized tomorrow really never comes because tomorrow is going to be today, right? So the Lord was so smart in saying it that way. And so it comes to a choice. It's a choice. Am I going to dwell on the worry that comes, on the fear, on the anxiety, on the anger? Or am I going to do what this verse said that we just read, where it talks about bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ? In other words, when I'm scared, when I'm anxious, when I'm depressed, when I'm angry, what does the Bible say about it? What does the Bible tell me to do? Right? And we need to give it to the Lord. And we need to talk to Him about it. And then we need to do what Habakkuk did. And that's rest in the Lord and wait for His answer. Right? Oh, we need to wait for Him. We need to wait for the Lord to give us His peace. And like last week, we talked about He doesn't always take away those, the situation we're in, but He gives us victory through it by giving us His peace and calmness and assurance that He's going to take care of it. Right? So next week we're going to talk about what the Lord did say to Habakkuk. As Habakkuk waited, the Lord spoke to him on why he was sending the Babylonians. And so we'll talk about that next week. And in the meantime, let's keep each other in prayer. Wait on the Lord. Spend time with Him. But open your ears, your heart, because He wants to speak to the quietness of our heart. He wants to flood you with His peace. He doesn't, like we talked about, always take away the situation, but He does give you that assurance that he's walking you through it. So, I hope you can join us on Yom Shishi. Friday is the same time today. Um, And I hope you're enjoying Pastor Stephen's teaching in the book of Ephesians as much as I am. Let's make sure we keep each other in prayer this week, and especially for those in Israel. And also for... You know, the war between Russia and Ukraine, it's so sad. So, and I know many of you have relatives there. So, you know, keep our eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Spend time with Him, sweet women. Oh, hope you can stay around and chat. I'd love to chat with you. God bless you.
worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are, and that is who you are, and that is who you are, that is who you are, and that is who you are, and that is who you are, and that is who you are, that is who you are, that is who.